Sehr verehrte Aktionärinnen und Aktionäre, Dear shareholders, dear shareholder representatives, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Board of Management and the employees of Daimler AG, let me also welcome you to our 2012 annual shareholders meeting. First and foremost, I would like to add my good wishes to Manfred Bischoff. We all hope that he will have a speedy recovery and we wish him all the best. Good recovery, dear Manfred. At the same time, I'd like to thank Jürgen Hambrecht, who at Manfred Bischof's request and according to our bylaws, has taken over the direction as chairman of this year's annual meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, according to calculations made by the United Nations, at the end of October last year, the global population passed the 7 billion mark for the first time. Since then, it has grown by a further 34 million people. Every three days, more people are added to our planet's population than live in Stuttgart. Every year, the increase is com comparable to the total population of Germany. These demographic facts alone give rise to a further remarkable numbers which also affect the automotive industry. For example, the number of automobiles sold annually worldwide is expected to increase by approximately 40 million vehicles until 2020. At that point, almost 330,000 new vehicles will be sold every single day. Numbers like these make it easy to understand why one dominant word at this annual shareholders meeting is growth. And the question is not if this growth is taking place, the question is how we can make it sustainable. Our answer brings us to the second dominant theme of this meeting, innovation. Innovation has the potential to transform growth into prosperity. Purely quantitative growth might be cause for concern, but innovation can transform it into qualitative progress and growth. If that transformation is successful, then growth becomes both environmentally compatible and socially and economically productive. One example is the continued development of the automobile into a zero-emission vehicle. Another example is the digital networking of automobiles which can be used to guide and diffuse traffic flows. Both of these issues are fundamental to the future, and Daimler is at the forefront in both, based in each case on a combination of innovation and growth. In sum, ladies and gentlemen, your company has built a superb foundation on which it can continue to grow innovatively, profitably and in a sustainable manner in the years ahead. Today I would like to tell you in detail about the facts on which this assessment is based. I'll focus on three central themes. First, a review, a look back at the key developments in 2011. Second, a report on our current situation and our expectations for full year 2012. And third, a look at our goals and strategies for the future. Let's begin thus with a review of 2011, the anniversary year of the automobile. Last year, on more than 2.1 million occasions, people the world over opted to buy a Daimler vehicle. About 1.38 million of these vehicles were from Mercedes-Benz cars, 8% more than in the year before. And what's even more remarkable, that was more cars than ever before. We also saw considerable growth at Daimler Trucks and Mercedes-Benz Vans in 2011. Truck sales grew by 20%, van sales by 18%. In spite of difficult market conditions, Daimler Buses was able to post a sales increase of 2% for complete buses. Daimler Financial Services set new record highs in 2011, both in terms of new business and contract volume. And that's not all. Our group revenue increased by 9% to 106.5 billion euros, our EBIT was at 8.8 .8 billion euros, and earnings from our ongoing business operations even reached 9 billion. These figures represent increases of 20 and 24% respectively compared to the previous year. Our net income was 6 billion euros, which is 29% more than in 2010. All of these values and results are not merely good, they are among the best in our 125 years of history. In 2011, we also clearly recouped our capital costs and thus definitely generated added value. 
3.7 billion euros value added. That's almost 1 billion euros more than the previous year's figure. Our return on investment was just under 20 percent, which is a significantly higher figure than our target of 8 percent. All in all, we can conclude that the anniversary year of the invention of the automobile was yet another successful year for your company. We did achieve profitable growth. And of course, you as our shareholders, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will profit from this positive development. The Board of Management and the Supervisory Board recommend to the annual shareholders meeting that Daimler pay a dividend in the amount of 2 euros, 20 euro cents per share. That's approximately 20% more than last year, and it's one of the biggest dividends ever paid in the history of Daimler. The total dividend payout amounts to more than 2.3 billion euros. That's equivalent to a dividend payout ratio of about 40% of the group's net income. Now, what were the main reasons for our success? A central factor certainly was and remains the global reputation of the Mercedes-Benz brand, which is based on strong and also emotionally appealing products. For example, the C-Class family, which was updated at the beginning of 2011, sold extremely well. The S-Class was once again the global market leader in its segment. Our range of SUVs sold better than ever before in spite of the M-Class model changeover. And at Smart, we once again significantly increased sales to approximately 100,000 units. In addition to the new M-Class, we launched five more new passenger car models in 2011. They included the SLS AMG Roadster, the convertible version of our super sports car, which, uh, then the C-Class Coupe, which has been extremely popular from the very start, and last but not least, our new B-Class that you can see in this photo here. You will also find most of our new models here on the grounds of the ICC, the International Congress Center here. I call you the invite you to take advantage of the opportunity to make your own judgments about them. It's a very worthwhile exercise. With regard to our commercial vehicles, we also owe our success primarily to a strong range of products. In 2011, we updated and expanded it in all of our business regions. In other words, innovation and growth played a big role here as well. The high point of the year was clearly the premiere of what was likely our most important truck of the decade, the new Mercedes-Benz Actros. You can also take a close look at this outstanding truck here at the ICC. It's the result of 10 years of work and over 20 million kilometers of testing. And these efforts really pay off. The new Actros is the first long-haul truck to comply with the stringent Euro 6 standard more than 20 months before it goes into effect. In the U.S. in 2011, we launched two new trucks in the so-called vocational segment. This segment covers trucks for various applications, including off-road assignments. At Fuso, we introduced the new Canter, the most important volume model in our entire truck range. The new generation of the Vito and the Viano have greatly contributed to our van success. In the bus sector, the successor of our best-selling Mercedes-Benz Citaro City Bus has been on the road since 2011. It is setting new standards for safety, comfort and economic efficiency. Thanks to attractive financing, leasing and insurance products, Daimler Financial Services also once again achieved substantial growth. However, the quality of our products and services is demonstrated by more than their market success. It's also confirmed by many positive test comparisons, prizes and awards. Let me give you just a few examples here. We were awarded the German Golden Steering Wheel for the new SLK and the new M-Class. We also won the Autonis Design Prize in no less than four categories. C-Class, C-Class Coupe, CLS and SLS AMG Roadster were each selected as the most beautiful car in their respective segments. At the same time, the CE and M-Class also took top honors in the JD Power Vehicle Ownership Satisfaction Study for Germany. Our service centers came out on top in the ADSC service center test. 
in the truck sector, the new actress claimed the Truck of the Year award immediately after its market launch. In addition, it received the European Transport Sustainability Prize. Our Atigo Bluetech Hybrid, the first hybrid production truck in Europe, was one of the winners of the EcoGlobe Awards. And our financial services also claimed top honors again. We were number one in customer and dealer satisfaction surveys in many countries. Behind all of this success, of course, there are people, more than 271,000 people to be exact. That's how many men and women worked at Daimler on the uh, December the 31st of last year. In other words, around 11,000 more than in the previous year. And this also is yet another great example of growth. And I'll gladly add that the record results I just mentioned would not have been possible without the skill and commitment of our employees. Building automobiles is a team sport, and the Daimler team had a great a first class season in 2011. On behalf of the entire board of management, I would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to the entire team, and maybe you join in with me. Our appreciation will not be expressed in praise alone. All eligible Daimler employees will receive a profit-sharing payout in the amount of 4,100 euros in their April salaries. This is the highest payout since we introduced our profit-sharing system 15 years ago. And let me briefly add one more point. As you recall, last year's annual shareholders meeting was very much overshadowed by the natural disaster in Japan. Fortunately, none of our roughly 11,500 Daimler employees in Japan directly suffered any harm as a result. Especially deserving of recognition was our employees' performance in building their business back up under the most difficult conditions. I would like to congratulate them on their outstanding achievement. Let me conclude this review by briefly discussing two changes that have occurred at our holdings. Together with our partner Rolls-Royce, we now own approximately 99% of the shares of Tognum. In other words, the public takeover offer we issued has, was accepted. We are now on our way to full ownership. Our upcoming priorities include the expansion of our business in the rapidly growing industrial engine sector. Regarding the plan sale of our shares in EADS. We are currently in negotiation with the KFW, Reconstruction Loan Corporation. As things currently stand, we expect to sell 7.5% of our shares to the KFW banking group in the second half of this year. As you can see, the overall picture for the past year, 2011, was very positive. Last year, Daimler celebrated both the 125th anniversary of the automobile and outstanding business results. And that makes the question all the more interesting, what can we expect in 2012? Mercedes-Benz cars first quarter sales numbers are so hot off the press they are almost still warm, but more importantly they are outstanding. Although the words new record have already been used several times over today, I have no problem repeating them. We delivered 314,000 Mercedes-Benz brand passenger cars to customers, actually over 340,000 if you include smart models. That to a 12% increase, each compared with 2011, and yes, another new record. In fact, the past March, we sold more cars than in any other month in the history of our company. We are especially pleased by the news we received about the new B-Class. Since its market launch last November, we've already delivered over 35,000 cars to our customers, even though the vehicle is still only available in Europe. That is more than just a promising start with more than 100,000 orders already available. 
This launch was even more impressive when you consider that every third B-class buyer previously owned a competing model. In other words, our compact model offensive is accelerating and we are going to significantly pick up speed there. Another key role in our success story is being played by a vehicle you can see here on the left from your perspective. It will hit the road in September. It's our new A-class. A as an attack. A as in all new. Headlines like these were not uncommon when we unveiled the new A-class at the Geneva Motor Show a month ago. We did in fact reinvent the model visually and technologically, but also in terms of its strategic positioning in the market. We didn't do this because the two predecessor models were unsuccessful. Quite on the contrary, we sold more than 2 million units of the previous A-Class over a period of 15 years. But with our new compact, we aim not only to retain long-standing customers, but also to attract new customer groups. And we are counting on the new A-Class in particular to achieve the second aim. And that's why it has a more youthful and sporty design. That is also why the new model's complete integration of an iPhone ushers in a new age of connectivity in vehicles for the Facebook generation and everyone else as well. We are also the first automaker to offer what might well be the most important iPhone service of all, the voice recognition and command system named Siri. You can talk to Siri in a completely natural tone of voice. You don't need to type emails, you can dictate them, and you can also use voice commands to search and surf the internet or select music, all of this without ever taking your hands off the steering wheel or perhaps being distracted. After all, our goal is to increase the flow of information in the vehicle and not the risk of having an accident. At the same time, the new A-Class also sets the bar higher for climate protection with CO2 emission per kilometer as low as 99 grams. And it's also setting benchmarks in terms of safety. In other words, we are taking our goal of making the Mercedes-Benz brand attractive and open to new customer groups, especially younger ones, very seriously. And if I already mentioned that more than 30% of today Today's B-Class purchases previously drove a competitive model. I'd like to add now that we believe that we can achieve a 50% conquest rate with our new A-Class. Growth through innovation, that's the plan. In just two and a half weeks, we will offer a preview of the third model in our compact family, the new compact family at Auto China in Beijing, and that's the concept style coupe, a sporty four-door car. No competitor offers anything like it. Some people call it the small CLS. You'll be surprised. We'll follow up on this later with a compact SUV and an additional compact car, and these models will round out a premium vehicle portfolio that has never before existed in such breadth and quality, certainly not at the lower end of the Mercedes model range. As promising as our compact offensive is, we have even more to offer. Here, at the front right, from your perspective, for example, you can see the latest version of our convertible icon, the SL. Thanks to its aluminum body, the new model is up to 140 kilograms lighter than its predecessor. Fuel consumption has been reduced by as much as up to 30 percent without any sacrifice in safety, quality or comfort. An automotive magazine recently described the SL as a happiness generator. Deliveries of this model began last Saturday. This coming June, we will see the introduction of our new CLS shooting brake, a vehicle which combines the elegance of a sedan with the design of a coupe and the functionality of a station wagon. With its introduction, we will once again create a completely new segment. This vehicle will then hit the showrooms at the beginning of October. And this year will also give the globally growing SUV community three new reasons to opt for a car with a star. The revamped G-Class, the new GL, and the new generation of our GLK, which you can see on the screen here. We will introduce the latter two vehicles in just a few hours in New York City at the auto show there. This will be followed by the unveiling of the new G-Class in Beijing in less than three weeks. As you can